Welcome back. In this video, we'll be laminating the stringers, each of which is made up of 15 layers of one half inch thick Sapili lumber. Out in the workshop, we follow these steps. One, cut a hole in a box. Two, put your chunk in the <laughs> Oops, wrong project. Let's get back to cutting out the jig from 3 quarter inch MDF board. The stringer jig will be made up of two layers of the MDF board, and as you can see, we make quite good use of the wood. When assembled, the jig is over 21 feet long, therefore it's a good idea to have multiple set of hands to help out. As with the stem jig, the stringer jig will not be part of the boat, therefore we bond it together with wood glue. Flipping the boards was a challenge. And as you can see, the ends of the jigs and the holes did not align perfectly. But that's not a problem. For the jig, it's only important that the top surface, shown here to the left, and the step in the stringer have the two jigs aligned. Before calling it a night, I clean up the excess wood glue. The next day, I mount the jig to a pair of sawhorses and the frame construction table, and then I cover the entire mating surface of the jig with polyethylene tape. And I use a laser level to ensure that the jig is straight. I borrowed a friend's Festool track saw to strip the two inch wide planks for the stringers. Okay, so what I have here is a number of eight foot uh, long, half inch thick by two inch wide planks. The stringer needs to end up at 1.75 inches. So I'm purposely gonna make it a little bit wider. And um, all the boards came eight foot long. Uh, not ideal, but I thought it'd be a good opportunity to just show that you can make all these different lengths work. So what I have in this first part, the steeper part, the back of the boat of the stringer where it's gonna be extra thick is I need the boards to be nine feet long. And since they're all eight feet long, I've cut the boards, um, I've left one at eight feet, seven feet, six feet, five feet, four, three, two, and one feet long. So what I'm gonna do is go with a five foot and a four foot board first. Then I'll take a, I'll just stagger them in different ways. A seven foot and a two foot. How about a three foot and a six foot? So six and three. And all these things I'm doing, I'm trying to overlap these different, these different um, joints with the wood. I go six foot, three foot. 
Then from here, I'm always trying to put the factory cut ends on the outside here at the end because those are going to get cut off. Then I do an eight foot and a one foot. So then I'm going to finish up with another five and a four. So I take my five foot down here and my four foot here. Hopefully you can see that you have all the different joints. So everything's kind of staggered out to different locations. So what I'm going to do now is set up these boards with the side that I want to laminate. Up. So I'm going to laminate this with thickened epoxy. Uh, I should be using the notch spreader. But I didn't know that they weren't polyethylene and the epoxy stuck to it. So I had to throw that one in the garbage and the uh, boat shop is not open. So I'm just gonna use a brush and put these together. So I'll probably have a lot of excess squeezing out. Hence I have the polyethylene sheet here. So let's give it a shot. For a brush, I just bought a box of 30 cheap brushes online and then I cut the ends off so it's a bit more stiff. Simply spread the adhesive out on each of the boards and then start laying up the laminate one board at a time. The next day, I removed all the clamps. I used an electric planer to get the total laminate thickness down to the correct size. The full length of the stringer is made up of 11 1 half inch thick laminates that go on top of the first five laminates that we've already put in place at the back end of the stringer. While hard to see here, I cut the ends of each of these boards at an angle so I'd have a wider uh, contact point for the epoxy at the intersection. With the first layer down, I add the second layer of boards. and then the third layer of boards. Given the size of the stringer, I decided to stop at three layers here. I'll finish this in two more uh, laminating steps with four boards with each of the two more processes.
Here you can see a slight mistake. I forgot to clean up the edge of these boards here. It will work just fine, but not quite as clean as the model Dan Lee is making. As you can see, I bought another notch spreader. It just helps apply the epoxy in a more even coating. At this point, the thick part of the stringer has 12 laminates, and the full length has 7. In order of sequence, I think it's important to align the boards horizontally so they don't slip by each other, and then when you clamp them down, you get a nice even laminate. These 2 inch thick maple boards that I'm putting on top really allow for even clamp pressure across the entire stringer. Adding laminates 8 through 11 is the same as the other boards. Therefore, I'll skip it in this video. With all the epoxy cured on all the laminates, I remove the clamps and get ready to clean up the stringers. I cut off the extended boards, but not up to the trim line at this point. I clean up the bottom side of the stringer with an orbital sander. And then we clean up the sides with the electric planer. If you haven't noticed, this stringer is huge and heavy. The final thickness of the stringer is supposed to be 1.75 inches. I leave it a little bit thicker so I can do final finishing later. I just want to make sure it actually fits in the boat and I can always take it off later, but I can't add it back. I translate each of the cut lines and the frame lines from the jig and onto the stringer.
I continue this marking from the transom all the way to frame two where the stringers end. For now, I leave the extra length on the stringer behind the transom. I'll cut this off later on the strong back. But I do cut off the front of the stringer at frame two. And finally, Let's take a look at one of the finished stringers. This clearly was a two-person job, so for the second stringer, I'll have a visitor from Wisconsin helping me out. And what I'll probably do is make a short video on that, just so you can see how I improve some of the mistakes made in this process. So let's take one last look at the stringer as it would be right side up in the boat. Till next time. That's the way you do it.